Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, third video, of course, uh, talking about loop antennas. So uh, I've repositioned my W6 LVP loop to be uh, at the corner um, here. So this will be its official space. It was pretty much more in the middle where the plant is for testing purposes. But the problem is uh, um, sometimes when I have friends, we eat here and I had the antenna to face. So uh, of course, moved it out to the corner for uh, the uh, having it out of the way. And of course, uh, with the uh, wire going in through the window. And of course, we have the uh, other corner. Sounds like a boxing uh, announcement. In the corner, we have a lightweight, the MLA30 antenna right here, which is on that corner. And um, I gotta say one thing. I started testing them with signals that are very, um, I would say that that stay pretty stable. So I've got a few signals here that this afternoon are really, really good for that. I have uh, CFRX 6070 Toronto. I got the CHU time signal that I usually get more of the ground wave on 3330 kilohertz. And I've been receiving WWV 15 megahertz very, very well this afternoon. And uh, you know what, guys? You guys are going to be in for a surprise. A lot of you are going to say, well, that cheap Chinese loop can't be as good as the W6 LVP loop. Well, of course, more testing is going to be needed. But for now, if I compare, I'm going to tell you guys, you guys are going to be uh, really amazed that MLA30 antenna performs as well as my W6 LVP loop on some of the signals that I've listened to. Not only that, it's actually quieter than my W6 LVP loop, which is kind of interesting. So, um, you know what? It's, uh, it's gonna be very, very interesting to compare these. I was reading yesterday an article on uh, shortwavelistening.com. Actually, it redirects to uh, the uh, MLA30 review from, um, I don't remember the guy, I'm gonna have to remember his name. I'll check it out later. We'll talk about it tonight on the live show. But he talks about the MLA30 loop and of course, He's got, he says he's got tons of hate mail for people saying, well, you know, that cheap Chinese stuff cannot be as good as U.S. made goods and blah, blah, blah. Well, I got to say, I agree with his conclusions that this works as well, if not better at times, than a, get this, this is a 50 U.S. dollar antenna. The W6 LVP loop and the form that I got it in U.S. dollars would be roughly 350 to $400. It's seven to eight times more expensive. And you know what? The first tests that I'm doing right now are kind of showing me that it's totally, totally not worth it paying on that high of a price. You know, it's a question of, of, uh, I mean, it's a question of having more money in your pocket at some point, you know, and there's, it's not like a $20 difference here. It's uh, several hundred bucks. And for a lot of people, that's the only antenna they can afford. A $50 can be afforded. A $300 cannot. So, um, you know, I'm uh, starting to get really amazed. And I was actually thinking if the tests do get, you know, a pretty good conclusion like I'm actually finding right now, as I'll be testing it several days in a row, I would have purchased three MLA 30s rather than one W6 LVP, just to give you an idea. It's also kind of easier to set up because you get almost everything. The only thing you need is a power supply that's easy to find. And um, a, um, you know, I use a broomstick, a plastic broomstick for the, for the MLA30. And it works great. And it costs two bucks at the dollar store, you know? So uh, anyways, tests are co continuing, but uh, I am very impressed by the MLA30 right now. So uh, of course, more tests are going to be continued and tonight we'll be comparing it on signals because we'll be live and I'll switch between both while we actually do some signals uh, compare and of course we'll talk about antennas for the shortwave listener also at the same time. If you enjoy our videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thanks for watching.